Oh, hi. Uh, my name is Zhong Jia Zhao. Uh, this is work with Jia Ming Song and Stefano Erman uh, from Stanford University. Uh, so first, a brief introduction of this talk. Uh, so latent variable generative models are very powerful tools for representation learning and have attracted a lot of attention. And in fact, people have come up with a huge number of different models, uh, such as virtual encoders, scans, and a lot of different variants. Uh, so what we aim to show here in this paper that these models are actually very similar in that they are all Lagrange two functions of the same primal optimization problem. Uh, based on this observation, we can categorize and organize all of these models, and that also allows us to perform Lagrangian two optimization to improve them. Uh, so first, let me explain some setup. Uh, so the problem of latent variable generative modeling is usually concerned with two variables, x and, x and z. Uh, the variable x, which is usually called observations, uh, usually has a complex distribution that we are trying to model. Uh, we call this distribution Q data. Uh, usually we are given some examples, some samples from this distribution, such as a data set of images. Uh, this data set usually has a lot of different varieties, such as object classes, lighting, and pose. Uh, so to capture these varieties, we use another variable z, which is usually called the latent variable. Uh, and usually, uh, this, on this latent variable, we define some simple prior distribution uh, that we call PZ uh, that has a tractable density. Uh, for example, it's a Gaussian. So traditionally, these models are trained by maximum likelihood. And if you know what this is, uh, they, they are usually trained by optimizing the evidence lower bound. But here, I'm going to show you a slightly different perspective on these models. And later, I'll show that these are actually equivalent. So we can think of these two distributions, PZ on Z and Q data on X, as two input marginal distributions. Our goal here is to design some learning algorithm that takes these as input and produces a joint distribution over both X and Z. Uh, the requirement here is that this joint distribution matches our provided input. More formally, we call this matching marginals. Uh, if we integrate out X, uh, then we agree with our provided prior, PZ. And if we integrate out Z from this joint, we agree with our provided marginal Q data of X. Uh, so if we do this, then this joint distribution is going to have a latent variable that is consistent with our provided prior, and it will draw samples that is similar to our data set samples. Uh, so um, to achieve this goal, we usually perimetrize these models in two different ways. Uh, one as a generative model, and the other as an inference model. Or you can think of this as being a graphical model in two different directions. So for the generative model, this defines a joint distribution, P of x and z, uh, which is just the prior times the conditional. And for the inference model, this also defines a joint. So this is probably something people talk less about, but it's entirely symmetrical uh, of Q data of Q and, Q and z, given x. Uh, and both of these joints have their corresponding marginals and posterior distributions. So you can think of this as a graphical model in two directions. Uh, so, um, so now that we have these two inputs, uh, one way to define this joint is through P of x given z. And this gives us a joint, which can serve as our model. And another way is to define Q of z given x. And this gives us a joint and can serve as our model. So we have two ways to define the same model. And so we want them to be consistent. And the nice thing about consistency is that uh, if it is consistent, then it automatically satisfies matching marginals. To see why this is, if you look at this first joint, PXZ, this by definition has the correct marginal on Z, if you look at how it's defined. And if you look at this joint, QXZ, this by definition has the correct marginal on X. This means that if the two distributions are consistent, we have correct marginals both on x and on z. So our objective can simply become minimizing some divergence or distance between the two joint distributions. Uh, so for example, I'm going to now connect this back to what we are familiar with. For example, variational encoders, uh, which most of you probably know from elbow, is actually equivalent to minimizing the KL divergence between these two. I don't have time to do the derivations. It's all in the paper. Uh, and also, there is also BICAN, uh, which directly uses an adversarial critic to minimize the Jensen Shannon divergence. And as another example, say adversarial autoencoders minimizes the sum of two divergences. 
One of them is KL over conditional distribution, and the other one is a Jason Shannon over the marginal. So now we want to generalize this. Uh, so in the most general form, we can think of having a vector of divergences. All we require is that they are not negative, and all of them are zero simultaneously if and only if P is equal to Q, or we have achieved consistency. And we can choose all kinds of divergences, including KL, or Jensen Shannon, MMD, or it could be an expectation over different divergences. So now given this definition, uh, we can equivalently state our objective as being asking the divergences to go to zero. And this is equivalent to consistency, which is equivalent to matching marginals. So however, if we only match the marginals, uh, that is not really enough, because we have provided as input two marginal distributions but we are asking the model to learn a joint distribution. And there are multiple different joint distributions that can correspond to the same marginals. So consistent solutions are not unique. Uh, in particular, there is a pretty bad consistent solution, uh, one where X and Z are actually independent. Uh, so this can be achieved by this. So our generative model just models X, no matter what Z is. And our inference model just models Z, no matter what X is. So if these two distributions are the same, and these two distributions are the same, we actually have consistency. But this is obviously not the kind of model that we want, because the whole point of latent variable modeling is to, for the latent variable to capture some information about the input. Uh, so obviously, we need some additional objectives. Uh, so to formalize this, uh, we can just say that uh, uh, we want our joint distribution to capture some meaningful relationship between X and Z. Or to more formalize this, we can use some function F to measure meaningfulness or unmeaningfulness in this case. And we minimize it subject to the constraint that the two distributions must be consistent. Uh, so for example, one very important measurement of meaningfulness is how much mutual information there is. Uh, for example, we don't want too little mutual information such that they are almost independent, uh, nor do we really want too much mutual information so that the latent variable capture all the unimportant details about the input. So there is some right amount of mutual information, and we may want to maximize or minimize mutual information uh, depending on what our model is currently doing and how much mutual information we actually prefer. Um, so we arrive finally at this primal problem. Uh, we try to minimize some alpha times the mutual information, uh, where alpha can be positive or negative, depending if we want to maximize or minimize, subject to consistency constraints. And this primal problem uh, can, has this Lagrange do function, uh, where we select a vector of Lagrange multipliers, one lambda for each of the divergences. So intuitively speaking, the lambda prices the different constraints. If we violate one of them, that becomes non-zero, and lambda tells us how much that penalizes us. Uh, and actually, one of our major conclusions is that uh, almost all these existing objectives actually take this form, or is equivalent to this form. All that's different is that they choose different alphas, and they choose different multipliers. Uh, so let me give you some examples. For example, this is beta VAE. Uh, in case you don't know what this is, just skip this slide. Uh, but uh, if you know what this is, you probably see it in this form. Uh, but actually, it is equivalent to this form. Uh, so let me parse this for you and compare this with the most general form we just proposed. So here, alpha is equal to beta minus 1. So this means that if beta is greater than 1, we are minimizing mutual information. And if it's less than 1, we are maximizing it. Uh, oh, a particular case is when beta is equal to 1. And then this becomes the original VAE. That means that the original VAE has no information preference, which kind of explains the previous observations that it's ambiguous. Uh, and here we can also write out the corresponding lambdas and the corresponding divergences. So this tells us what, how much this model is pricing the different divergences. And we have several other examples. We write these objectives into their corresponding Lagrangian form. And there are actually many more that uh, they're all in the paper. You can go for them for derivations. Um, so even though all of these models are Lagrange two functions of this primal problem, however, they're not exactly solving the primal. The problem is that the lambda is kept fixed. 
and that can be problematic sometimes. Uh, let me give you an example of a pathological behavior. For example, in this case, we set alpha to be negative one. So we are trying to maximize mutual information, and we set lambda to be one. If the divergence increased by 100, so that's a bad thing. We achieved worse consistency. But if that helps us achieve higher mutual information, the overall objective can still decrease, say, by 200. And that's obviously a bad thing. And if the model can keep doing this, uh, we may never achieve consistency. This is especially a big issue for continuous distributions, where the mutual information can just go to infinity and the model doesn't care about anything else. Uh, so to visualize this, we have this primal problem uh, where we are supposed to optimize within this feasible set uh, where everything is consistent. Uh, but what could happen is that if we just optimize this fixed Lagrangian do function, uh, we could get out of the feasible set if the reward for increasing mutual information exceeds the penalty of violating the constraints. And similar things can also happen for information minimization. Uh, so therefore, uh, the problems arise because we didn't really solve the primal problem. The solution is simple. We solve the primal problem. Uh, so with, the, with true Lagrangian optimization. Uh, so the only difference here is that uh, this lambda is also maximized over instead of keeping fixed. So the nice thing about this is that uh, if we have strong duality, that the solution of this two problem is going to be exactly the same as the solution of the primal problem. And strong duality will hold if the problem is convex and strictly feasible. And we show that both of these are true under some conditions. Uh, so for strict feasibility, um, I'm going to mostly talk about convexity. Uh, there is more derivation of strict feasibility in the paper. So for convexity, first of all, we can't really think in deep network space. Uh, that would be hopeless. Uh, but however, in distribution space, or the space of all probability measures, if we replace the mutual information with convex and concave bounds, then the problem can be convex. So we propose there is a convex upper bound and a concave lower bound to mutual information. The nice thing about these bounds is that the gap is zero for theta that satisfies consistency. So we are trying to satisfy consistency anyways, and if we achieve that, the bounds are exact. They are tight bounds. So now what we can do is that when we are minimize mutual, mu minimizing mutual information, we use the convex upper bound. And when we are maximizing mutual information, we use the concave lower bound. Uh, and in both cases, it's a convex optimization problem. And we show in theorem two of the paper that strong duality holds in the space of probability measures. And uh, we, uh, we can apply this to, the, uh, to some of the existing objectives. Uh, for example, we can apply it to InfoVAE, which has obviously a lot of hyperparameters here showing in red. And we can use Lagrangian optimization to automatically determine them. Uh, so the nice thing here is that Lagrangian VAE is Pareto optimal. Uh, so if you look at the x-axis here, we show the negative log likelihood or lower bound to it. And if you look at the y-axis here, we show the mutual information. So if, uh, and each of these red dots uh, correspond to some hyperparameter choice of info VAE. So you can see that if we choose different hyperparameters, we have different trade-off. And in particular, if the negative log likelihood is bad, so the bigger, the worse, uh, then we have a wider range of mutual information that we can take. And if we do Lagrangian optimization, uh, you can see that we are Pareto optimal in that for whatever consistency constraint you set for me, I can always find the maximum or minimum mutual information solution, depending on whether you want to max or min. So this is Pareto optimum. Uh, so there's one more thing. So throughout this talk, I gave no mention of how difficult it is to optimize these things. And it seems like there are quite a bunch of pretty nasty terms. But the nice thing here is that uh, so many objectives may initially appear to be bad, but they can actually be converted into something much nicer. So for example, variational autoencoders. Uh, so it is minimizing this chaotic divergence, which uh, is probably very, very hard to estimate or optimize. However, uh, this is equivalent to this form uh, that we know how to optimize very well. And similarly for beta VAE, uh, this has all kinds of nasty stuff. Like we don't know how to estimate mutual information very well in high dimensions. 
and we can't even sample from Q of X given Z. Uh, but nonetheless, this is equivalent to this objective, uh, which is much, much nicer, and we do know how to optimize it very efficiently right now. Uh, you may notice that there is this very peculiar weight sharing here. Uh, this coefficient here uh, has to be tied with the two red coefficients are tied together. And this is actually exactly for this reason. If we untie them, we choose the two independently, then there is no way we can get this very nice form which we can optimize like a variational encoder. Actually, we need GANs to optimize this. So it would be nice to characterize exactly all the objectives and which ones we can efficiently optimize and which ones we can't. So here I write a bunch of objectives. So we show in the paper that these are the only three objectives that we can optimize in a VAE styled method. A VAE meaning likelihood based optimization in case you're familiar with that term. And these are the only ones that can, optimize, that can be optimized like a GAN, uh, meaning that we can do likelihood free uh, estimation on one variable. So it's either a GAN or X, or it can be MMD or something like other likelihood free methods, or it's a GAN on Z. And if we allow GANs on two variables, uh, we can include more. But usually these models are empirically a little harder to train. And uh, anything outside of these are ones that we don't even know how to optimize efficiently uh, with GANs. Uh, one natural question to ask is that, uh, is there a new objective? Like we have come up with a family of things. Can we come up with a new objective to publish a new paper? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is no. Uh, so we actually prove in the paper in theorem one that any Lagrangian do objective in each of these computability categories uh, is a linear combination of existing objectives. And of course, this kind of things always carry some strings with them. There are some conditions. Uh, but you can check them out in the paper. They are not very bad conditions. They are pretty mild. Uh, but it kind of means that uh, we have published so many papers that uh, all the objectives are almost found. Uh, so finally, to summarize, uh, we show that many of the existing objectives are Lagrange two functions of a primal optimization problem. Uh, we show that we can perform Lagrangian two optimization for Pareto optimality. And finally, we categorize the objectives and show that new, no new objectives exist under some conditions. Uh, thank you. <laughs>